Well, we're back in the shop working on trucks again today. We're gonna be done with this truck nine here in a few minutes. Jason's got just a little bit more to finish up. On the tail light panel here on the back, he's got that just about done. He's just wiring in a couple more um, lights on the right hand side there. And we had to do some tarp work on this truck here. They had a collision with uh, two trucks on a tight driveway and they ended up smacking this tarp housing here. It kind of ripped the motor off and the housing that went the cover that went over the electric motor that winds the tarp up kind of bent this all up so we got that back straightened up i ended up welding that here and then i ended up putting this piece of flat stock on there just to kind of stiffen up the housing itself the tarp isn't in the greatest shape and it's wound backwards we like to wind them going over the top rather than all up underneath. So once we get this outside, we got to unwind the tarp and try to get it straightened out so it'll wind up straight and the way it's supposed to be. Uh, we're going to pull in truck eight in a little while here over in the bay next door over there. And if you recall in the last video, we ended up pulling the power divider out of this truck. We're waiting for parts for it. Truck 18's tore apart over on the far side over there. We're waiting for a turbo and a um, exhaust manifold uh, piece. So we ended up putting a new motor on there and I've got a plastic chrome cover in this box here that I just need to put um, over that motor like that. And then that's gonna be done. And once we get working on truck eight here, we'll show you what is involved on that. We've gotta get into the oil cooler on it. It's got the same engine as this truck here. So hopefully, hopefully that's all that needs is an oil cooler. So let's get this done, get this wrapped up, get it out. And then we'll uh, pull in truck eight here. All right, we have truck uh, eight in here and I've just drained the coolant out of the bottom of the radiator or the whole engine for that matter. And the first pail I took out looked pretty clean as it came into the pail, but now the oil is coming to the top. The, uh, this pail here was the first one and this was the second one. It started to get dirty towards the end. And then uh, the third pail, it was mostly oil. It was black as hell. So we've got to get the turbo off, get everything opened up here so that we can get down into that oil cooler itself. And hopefully that's all we have wrong uh, with this. But we're going to have to change some hoses out here because... If this oil is circulated through these hoses at all, just by what we've ran into as far as problems with the 9560, the oil ended up ruining all of the all of the radiator hoses. So we're going to have to replace all of them, or we're just going to see the problem down the road here uh, be a bigger problem. So we'll have to start unbolting things here so that we can get down into the oil cooler, which is right there, it's right in behind the turbo on this right hand side. All right, we ended up getting the turbo off. That came off without any problems. I broke this stud on truck 18. I was lucky that all four of these came off because I did not want to have to remove that exhaust manifold we have four of these c12s and in the past week three of them we've had the turbos off of so the only one that we didn't have to take the turbo off of was truck nine so 
we're going to dig this oil cooler out of there i don't know what it's going to involve to get that off i haven't had one of these off of there before so we're going to kind of have to figure things out as we go here all right we have the oil cooler removed that came off relatively easy i've never had an oil cooler off of a cat engine before uh, on the back side of the oil cooler, we have the block heater that comes in. You can kind of see the element sticking in through from the back side there. And when you plug your block heater in, that's what it's heating up is the actual oil cooler itself. So we've got the oil filter housing right here. This is where the oil cooler bolts on to. And then you've got the coolant where it comes in the front and out through the back side. And then the oil transfers through it, and that's how you cool how you cool your oil. So we're gonna make up a couple of plates to bolt on to the bottom of the cooler. We'll cap one off. And then the other plate that we make up on this other side here, we'll put an air fitting in, dump this in a pail of water, and we'll see. Ah, uh, if this is actually bad, I'm hoping it is, because if it isn't, that means we've got head gasket trouble, but more than likely, it's going to be this guy here. So, I'm going to make up some plates quick, and we'll get them bolted on, and we'll water test it. Alright, we have the oil cooler setting on the bench. I just took a piece of cardboard. Set the cardboard on here and took a drill bit, punched down through to get my holes lined up. And I used this piece of cardboard for a template to drill this, drill these plates out. Now I didn't measure anything. The holes ain't even centered or anything. It's just, it's going to serve its purpose. So I've got one that's going to be a blocker plate. We'll bolt that to there or one end or the other. And then this one here is the same plate, but I've got a hole in the center of it. Now I'm just going to take this hydraulic fitting. I'm going to weld it to the plate, and then we'll hook an air fitting on that. Then we can charge that cooler with air, put it in the bucket of water, and see if we get air bubbles coming out of the end here. So we got to do a little welding, and then we'll... Uh, We'll test it with air. Uh, if anybody is looking for something to cut metal with, this damn thing here is just freaking great. It's a metal cutting saw. It's got, a, I believe, a four and a half inch. Actually, it's probably a five inch. I don't even know what size blade it is, but at any rate, that cuts fantastic. Uh, we've got mostly Milwaukee. We actually, we have all Milwaukee cordless tools. Now, I made a mistake the other day. And I bought this damn impact here on eBay, and it is not the fuel uh, impact. It's an 18 volt, but it's not the fuel uh, tool like these other ones here, and it ain't worth the crap. So when you're buying these tools, make sure you buy the fuel um, tool. The girls will take the, the impact and a couple of these grinders with them when they chisel plow so that if they have to cut a bolt off, they can use the grinder. And we're always running low on grinders. That's why I bought one the other day. And Well, and needless to say, that's, that's a weak unit. So we'll get welding this on there, and then we'll air test that oil cooler. All right, we have the plates bolted down on the oil cooler. And what I did is I just put an O-ring on the mating surface between these plates that I made and the oil cooler just to kind of seal that up. Now, uh, these plates, I did not measure anything. All I did is just use the cardboard as a template. And as you can see, them plates are kind of crooked, but all they're needed to do is to just cover up them ports on the oil cooler. Now. If this oil cooler is not leaking, I am not putting it back on anyway, so I'm kind of wasting my time doing this, but it will give us an idea as 
whether or not it's the exact problem, but um, 20 year old oil cooler, once you have it off, a nice sense of putting it back on. So we've got our air fitting set up here. We've got a um, little reducer here that we can uh, fluctuate the airflow. I'm not sure we want to put 150 or 60 PSI on that oil cooler. I'm not sure if it can handle that. And we don't want to prematurely blow it and then say, hey, it's leaking. We want to know whether or not it is leaking. We only want to put about 40 or 60 pounds of pressure on that. Here's our bucket of water. Gonna charge it with air, dump it in the water. All right, Jared's gonna charge that with air. Oh, it looks like my welds are leaking a little bit. But, well, just dump one end in the pail of water. I think I can hear it coming out that end. I think so too. There's cool in there. Oh, it's getting open end. Here, maybe increase it. Yeah, dump the other end in. Doesn't it seem like there's... Yeah. Now you can see air bubbles right there. There's one. Here we go, right here. And then the other thing you have to remember too, yeah, there it is right there. That's the other thing you have to remember, <laughs> the pail had too much water in it. The other thing you have to remember too is this is gonna leak more once the engine gets up to operating temperature. At first, this didn't wanna leak at all, and now it is pushing air right through, so. This is the coolant side. The coolant would run through these pores here and then the oil would circulate around on the well, inner side of it. So, well, this thing's gonna have 70 PSI in it. You're yeah, you're true, it. true. It could get up to 80, 80 pounds of pressure, oil pressure. Okay. So, well, we're gonna hold on to them plates, the, uh, all the engines that we have that have cats use that same oil cooler so um yeah well we're gonna go ahead and plant some corn now um we did a little bit of fitting here already and um the conditions are just about there where we can actually plant some corn so we've got some parts ordered for this and we're gonna be i think the parts are a day out so Next video we'll be coming at you with will be a corn planting video, I hope, if everything goes to plan. So take it easy, folks, and we'll catch you at the next video.